Uh, unfortunately, it looks like this strike is actually going to be a long one because of a dispute over money over the internet uh, royalties, if I'm not mistaken. And from what I understand, they are nowhere close to the meeting of the minds here. So that means even if the strike does get off, the, you know, it was rectified in a few months, which pro if it is, there's still going to be a delay in movies and TV and everything. But it's a legitimate strike. I oh, mean, I agree. It's, it's a major issue. You're dealing with digital rights management. And, uh, and it's weird because there's no precedent for this. It's really hard to figure out how do you pay people where, where something is distributed in such a, an infinite way through the Internet. But, I mean, it's, but the same thing is like, you know, you, you, you create a, you photograph something, you put it up on Flickr, and some advertising agency takes your photograph, and they say, hey, we want to use your photograph in our ad campaign, and initially be flattered, be sure, but then you're making millions of dollars off of your photograph, and you didn't get nothing. You'd be pretty pissed off. Oh, of course, I agree with the writers. So that's 100%. that's where the writers are coming from. And from what I understand now, people are making like a four percent, four cent royalty on DVD sales. Yep. And I want to tell you guys something here because I I uh, know a little bit about business business here. Have you guys noticed like today when you see featurettes on DVDs, they're broken up into like fifteen minute chapters. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that like before? You'd see like a two hour documentary. The reason they do that is to fuck the writers and talent. Mm -hmm. If it's over a certain length. They can claim it as a little mini featurette. They don't have to pay them the full royalty. So that's why the way they're getting around that is doing those little 15-minute chapters mm -hmm. as a whole. So they're actually little features on their own. They're not a single feature. And the writers have traditionally been screwed by Hollywood. Oh, I agree. In the first place. I mean, it's like the it's like the, the writers get the writers guild really hasn't helped. I mean, you may have like 10 people writing a film, which is the way Hollywood likes to operate because they just they can never be satisfied with one script. But only like maybe three of the people involved are allowed to get the credit. Oh, screen, I agree. You know? I think I think screenwriters are the lifeblood of Hollywood. But on the opposite end, have I told you guys how much I hate jazz musicians? Yeah. Can I they would, actually hear that? I hope they can. Is there, can I, a microphone pick uh, up what's going everybody on? Everybody, in case you can hear in the background, so I'm sound leading. That is a band yeah, next door. Now, it's very have, loud. Like, we got a house band music playing in the background. Folks. There's a house band playing next door. So uh, in the other studio. Well. Um, so if you hear it, that's what it is. But anyway, yeah, I'm disappointed in this strike. I think it's going to be a real long time, and I think a lot of people are going to suffer in the long end, forever. I mean, really, I think a lot of people who had their projects lined up to go are going to lose them. But well, come on, let's let's be honest. It's it's a strike, mm -hmm. and it's not a blacklisting. I mean, no, no, no. no, no I don't no, mean it's a no, blacklisting. I mean that no, people the have their projects the black, ready to go. The blacklisting is when a lot of screenwriters really suffered. A lot of directors. A lot, a lot of writers never recovered from. Yeah, that. exactly. A lot of them had to write under aliases and then actually have other people submit their scripts under their name. Really, the only people who are really going to suffer. Well, I mean, you're going to see you're going to suffer by not having an income for a while. But I mean, the people who are going to suffer are like fans of shows. You know, like they just made an announcement that although they've already shot half the season of 24. They're not going to finish it until the strike is over so because they don't want to show half 12. a season and have people wait. That's right, twelve. But sometimes they do a two-hour episode, so, so it's not always 36. twelve. Mike, smarty pants. And let's talk about the strike. Who this is everything. affecting? Of course, this is affecting TV shows, mm -hmm. movies, and I even believe Broadway plays, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my no. God! No, 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 that's, no, a, no, that's, no. that's a separate. That's a separate. That's, that's another strike. No, that's just What's stage strike? Hands. The other strike stage is stage hands. hands. Yeah. Well, that look there. It's a problem. Uh, that's all I'll say. The problem. Good thing Harvey Firestein. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, or actually, is that your oh, Paul Lynn? I don't know. Um, Paul Lynn's Holly, Holly, Halloween special is out on DVD. Yes, that's uh, a must. I want to rent that. Yeah, and and, and, and that wouldn't actually. be made today if there was a writer's strike. <laughs> yeah, because Bruce Valanche actually did a lot of writing on exactly. that Exactly, and Bruce Valanche is a Screen Writers Guild member. Yes. Uh, writes for a lot of award so anyways, shows, so that it might affects be all of us. Because, because really, in the long term, if, if these these precedents are set and, and the writers come out uh, and, and and get whatever they want, it affects how everything that we do on the internet. Well, why don't we talk processed. about some of our favorite screenwriters? I think it's a good idea. Yeah, because I've run out of steam on this well, issue. When we do that, <laughs> yeah, I have to. Why we do that? Why we talk about some of our favorite screenwriters? Uh, we'll put up a phone number for you guys to call in if you'd like to call in and maybe comment on some of your yeah. favorite films or yeah. the strike. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Talk to us about, I mean, if there's a particular screenwriter that you like out there, I'm looking at a camera that I shouldn't be. Uh, if there's a particular screenwriter that you like, you know, and that we're maybe not talking about or you want to agree with us, robot camera right here, uh, call into the number. We're live right now. Last, last time we had a live show, it was for Halloween, and we had scariest movies as the topic. 
and not one motherfucker called in. Because I forgot Thank to you. post it on MySpace. I'm sorry, guys. No, mm -hmm. but still, people should just they were all out randomly partying. watch our mm -hmm. show. Hey, I'd be out partying and, and egging houses if I could. Yeah, man. And they're, they're rushing to call in right now. Um, of the as always. Listing, one of the really fine, fine uh, screenwriters that luckily emerged from the blacklisting. Uh, he had to go under that alias of name that you said, but uh, Dalton Trumbo, I Dalton thought Trumbo was... Dalton uh, Trumbo was a great writer. And he actually Johnny wrote, Get Your Gun? He actually wrote and directed yeah. that, which is a very Johnny, frightening film. Johnny Get film. Your Gun is fantastic. It's one of the most cynical, cynically brilliant movies I've ever seen. And Donald Sutherland is uh, what was the uh, What was the... Um, was it Megadeth that did the music video? Yeah, uh, no, was no, the, no, Metallica. Metallica did and music Justice video. Wrong. One. Wasn't that was, that was yeah. one, right. That was yeah, inspired by that. That shows scenes from the movie. Probably one, the Timothy best. Timothy Bottoms? Anti, probably the best. Right. Donald anti, Sutherland. One of the best anti war yeah. films ever made. Uh, the film concerns a Timothy Bottoms, a soldier who is deaf, blind, and missing all of his limbs. Yeah, and he's he just a, 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 a torso, and he can't communicate. The only thing that you see is his thoughts, and I think that's really interesting. Yeah, the whole movie is what's going on in his head. Yeah, and the portrayal of Jesus Christ by Donald Sutherland is so brilliant. Like when he sits there and in his head he explains to Jesus Christ, he's like, well, I can't talk, I can't see, uh, I can't hear. I guess he can hear, I think. No, no he, he can, can only feel. He can feel yeah, he can. Like on his torso. And Yeah, and he has no arms and he explains this to Jesus and Jesus is like, oh, I'm sorry, I can't really help you there. And then walks away. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, that's kind of cynical and brilliant. Uh, but yeah, Dalton Trumbo wrote Spartacus, mm -hmm. which is a movie I didn't care for at all, but I think that had more to do with Kirk Douglas taking over the picture away from Stanley Kubrick, but... It's still a good movie, though. Yeah. Are you, are you, I, you might enjoy that film more if you didn't know that bit of information. I'm going to go on record. No, I, I I'm actually record never in. cared. I didn't ever hmm. care for Spartacus. I think it's the best Roman I epic think it's film. a horrible film, guys, because Stanley Kubrick even hates it, and that should tell you that already. Maybe we had a seance last what night to confirm that. Now, wait, do you think oh, it's a horrible a film because you think it's supposed to be horrible, or do you think it's horrible it's just, objectively? Could you I did not really, like it. I, I didn't like it. it. I'm even, talking about even you. Talk about him. Okay, <laughs> even, before that, even before I knew about what Stanley Kubrick thought, I didn't like the film because I felt really it was one of those star vehicles hmm. that was made. It really felt like, okay, let's make a vehicle for Kirk Douglas. Fuck everybody else. And I feel he was the center. I of felt the like other there people. was one good performance in it, and that was Peter Ustinov. That was it. I thought uh, was it Lawrence Olivier? It's been a long time since I've seen it. Yeah, Lawrence Olivier. He was very good in the played, film. Uh, but yeah, I I felt I just felt so detached from the film. I thought it was a mm. piece of Hollywood fluff. I just I could feel nothing. I mean, uh, the the passion behind Spartacus, I couldn't see it. I thought Ben Hur was twice as good. Um, and uh, yeah. I'm going to go on record and mention my favorite um, of the uh, films, which is um, mm. my favorite screenwriter actually would be, uh, oh my God, I cannot believe I'm blanking on his name. Oh God, he wrote Network. Please forget about Petty, Petty Chayefsky. Chayefsky. Thank you. Matt, I can't believe I'm brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant screenwriter. Brilliant, He's brilliant, written brilliant, two brilliant, of the brilliant. finest screenplays, I think, in the history of, of filmmaking, which I consider The Hospital one of the most Hospital's brilliant scripts brilliant. ever. Yeah. I mean, it's great. I, it's not my favorite. Even the opening. Of how they describe how this doctor goes in and they find. He did him Alter dead. States too. Yeah. That was the screenplay. Yeah, very but it was fucked with. Strange, they, he, yeah. but, but Ken Russell totally fucked. I like Patty Chayefsky. Too. I I admit, I agree. He's a he's a brilliant. <laughs> he's a he's a vanguard screenwriter. I just think he has a tendency to be didactic. Oh, guys, I'm sorry to interrupt here. Gloria, I just re our director, Gloria. Gloria, I just realized something. Please be sure that I have the right phone number on the screen because I realize I just took these Folks, credits from the studio. Folks, he also refers to God as Gloria, so I think he's taking the Lord's yes, name. Yes, I'm talking name. to Gloria. Gloria, please be sure that number is correct. Thank you so much. We're taking care of that. Thank you. Uh, We'd also, uh, anybody that wants to call in on the... In, the other line. Yeah, call Crank in on the phone number. And and we'd like your opinion. Do you like Edwin's old oh, voice the number. or the new voice? <laughs> Very good, thank you. That's I'm voting for the call. I'm voting for the new voice. I like the new voice. What do you guys think? Makes him sound tougher. I think. Yeah. So. <laughs> Don't fuck like with me. More. Yeah. More I think Charles we should all Bronson talk like him. For hey, the he's rest one of my of the favorites. Show. But no, I'll go back to uh, Patty Chayefsky. Well, actually, he's also my favorite screenwriter, and um, one of my favorite films that he wrote was uh, actually a brilliant anti-war film, which I'm blanking on the title, but it stars James Garner. Oh yeah, the, uh, the uh, uh, oh shit. See? Uh, <laughs> no, it's the Americanization of Emily. Yes, uh, that, okay. I saw that. Uh, Arthur Hiller directed it. 
Yeah, well. You know, and he's not even the greatest director. He did The Hospital. I think if The, the Hospital had a better director, I think The Hospital would even be better. Um, Probably be maybe hospital, a little more classic. Yeah, I think it's the, an interesting The movie. Hospital, be, at times, like Eric said, it, it gets a little didactic. It gets a little bit over dramatic. I mean, there's a, mm. there was a, like a little monologue that George C. Scott does in front of Diana Rigg as he's sitting in, in one of the, uh, like the waiting rooms and he just starts talking about how his son's a hippie and doesn't understand. And it's like, all right, a little, a little too preachy. But, I mean, Marty. Marty is one of the finest comedies I ever saw in my life. It is so good. And it's got so much heart and so much soul. And it's probably one of the finest performances that uh, I've ever seen. Uh, I mean, Ernest Borgnine's wonderful. You know what's so sad is he never really achieved that apex. That was the apex of his career. He really never did anything that good again. He became mostly a B-movie actor after that. I mean, he did some good Ernest movies. Ernest Borgnine? Yeah, I don't think he, I think Marty was like the pinnacle. Well, no, I no. think uh, Fatso in From Here to Eternity, I thought he was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean but I mean, he did a lot of stuff like, uh, you know, he did like a lot of epic movies in the 50s and 60s. But I know? mean, not as a leading man type. No. No, yeah, well, you, well with really that face, man, type, you can't be a you can't be a leading man with that face. Well, that Lee Marvin movie he did where he was the uh, oh yeah 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 motorman yeah the motorman that was oh uh, wonderful Empire of the North Empire yes. of the North yeah. <laughs> which is one of the best uh, unknown films of Robert Aldrich's career amazing go check that out on an unrelated time um, I just want to put a shout out one of my favorite screeners and we we mentioned him in another show I love Billy Wilder uh, I think this is a guy for whom English was not a second language. I mean, to this day, he still speaks with a German. Well, his was his accent. second language, I believe. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's right. Yes. And yet, this is a guy who wrote a brilliant film noir called Double Indemnity, uh, or adapted it, and and did a wonderful job with the dialogue. And he wrote some one of my favorite comedies of all time is a movie called One Two Three, with James Cagney, and it's all verbal dialogue, and it's amazing. It's just amazing, and uh, you know I, I I'm a huge Billy Wilder fan, but you know, have we seen too many Billy Wilder films? Am I the only like? I've seen no, I, I've seen I, Billy the Wilder. That, the only thing that tarnishes Billy Wilder's name in my mind, or sullies his good name, as I would like to say, uh -oh. is uh, uh, Cameron Crowe calls him like his biggest uh, mentor. Right, he and, him for and a book, influence, correct. yeah, yes. and interviewed him for a book and everything. Conversation. And I refined like that, except for a couple films, Cameron Crowe is an awful filmmaker. He is just his. Some of his movies are well, just made his, too many of them. His film, his films lately have been awful. After Singles, they are shit. Singles is okay, but I like Singles. I, I like Stay it. Anything and, and Fast Times, which he wrote, are terrific screenplays. Yeah, Amy Heckerling directed that one, but yeah, I'm not a huge Cameron Crowe fan myself. But I don't, I, I don't like Cameron Crowe. Think Crow. that should. Mm. Oh come on, Jerry Maguire, Wilder. It didn't bother me. Mm. Show me the money. The thing that Billy Wilder that like, can I just not bother me. The <laughs> thing is like like what I love about Billy Wilder is that he knows how to construct a story, which a lot of sc uh, screenwriters today don't seem to know how to do. Like say what you will about something that might seem dated now, like some like it hot. But if you think about the concept and how it's constructed from the beginning, middle, and end, it's absolutely flawless. Seven year itch. Was that Billy Wilder? He directed it, but he didn't. That was a play. I'll tell you my favorite Sunset Billy Wilder film. Yeah, Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you Brilliant. my favorite Billy Wilder film. I, I think he wrote this. Please forgive me if he didn't. You could probably clarify this, but I will say it has one of my favorite performances in movie history. Uh, the Lost Weekend with Ray Milan. Yeah, he did write it, and he did write it. Brilliant, yeah, brilliant that's a, that's film on alcoholism movie. and addiction. Ray Milan's and, fantastic. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a really haunting portrayal. And to give Ray Milan credit, he had never had a drink in his life, he said, before he took that role. But yet, I completely believed he was an alcoholic. It was the first time really a film really dealt with addiction that way. Because Hollywood really didn't go with addiction too much. It was well. What helped it though was that it was based on a really successful novel at the time, so people were Jones and see the movie. Anybody want to talk about novel. screenwriters out there? You can give us a call. Yeah, please call. Anybody out there? Mm -hmm. Screenwriters. I, did everyone start their like Thanksgiving? Come on, was... you gutless punks. See what's happening? We got so many calls. We got to bring them up. The I would like to bring up my favorite. I don't oh, know if he's my Jeff. favorite. Let's get to Jeff. Oh, let's let's get Jeff. Get to Jeff. Uh, well, I already I, said Petty Chayefsky. Come on. I, well, I, no, 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 that's his idea. Two. Well, he took one of mine. Okay, one of my favorite. A screen I'll, right. I'll, I'll say John Hughes and then you can't <laughs> Okay, thank you. There you go. There, do you want to go now? No, 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 no. Give us, give us. Come sure? on, you sure? Yes, you okay with this? He's wearing a scarf. I'm everybody. kidding. Hey, I'm, go ahead. I'm cold. Got uh, cold. At least we have good taste, Jeff. We okay. don't agree on something. Uh, Preston Sturges oh, is one of my favorites. Very interesting. Also. Um, he was, I mean, for the most part, he directed all his own screenplays, but there are a lot of, like, lost classics that I love. Everybody knows Sullivan's Travels, but I like one called The Great McGinty. 
another one called the Palm Beach Story, which was a revelation for me when I first saw it because I am a huge fan of Screw yes. Paul. Hey, yes. hello, hello. Who's there? Uh, what, is, uh, what do you think of Richard Lagravanese? Um, I think I like I like him. What the hell did he do recently? Did he oh oh shit! Did he do the Fisher King? <laughs> oh yes, he did. He did the Fisher King. He wrote the Ref. He did uh, Freedom Riders. Yes. Oh shit! Yeah. He also did yeah. She's Living yes. So Loud. Living uh, So Loud. The one with Holly Hunter, please. Yeah, yeah, Living Out. Living Out Loud. Out loud. Fisher King's oh. actually pretty good. I'm I Emily like Sanders, Fisher King quite a bit. I like Fisher King. I think he's a very good screenwriter. I think actually, I think he the, did something else recently. I think The Ref is a very well written movie with Kevin Spacey and uh, Oh yes, I love Judy that Davis. film. I, love I never that saw film. that actually. It's a very well written film. In fact, it I has a it was dig. Okay. It has a dig actually at Gene Siskel because Gene Siskel actually hated that Fisher King. So they actually have uh, please J.K. Simmons play a character who calls uh, Eber, I'm uh, sorry, Siskel, who gets blackmailed by uh, one of the, the son of Kevin Sp Spacey uh, for uh, sex photos, which is a little dig at uh, Gene Siskel. Mm -hmm. and you like know, something funny. rolling in or Well, you know I must like because Kevin Spacey's in, and I usually hate anything. Yeah, I in. know that. That's it's really actually a very good performance because him and Judy Davis really are very have excellent chemistry and they're well, each other I love, out. I love Judy Davis. I love her in almost very anything theatrical. she does. And Dennis Leary is very good, actually. He's very good because he, he's a lot of fun to watch. Well, when I saw the trailer, it looked like a Dennis Leary vehicle. That's why I kind of stayed away from it. Oh, no, it's really... It's more it's like a an screenplay. ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. You know what it feels like? It feels like a black comedy that John Hughes would have done. kind of feels like a little bit like trains, planes, trains, and automobiles. Only a, a little darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I would definitely recommend checking that out. But yeah, Richard Lagavanese is a very good writer, and he's definitely a unique one, and I'll give him credits for there's that. Something else, there's something else that he did that drove me crazy, what he uh, wrote, because I remember reading that name recently, but it wasn't with any of the, the films that we had mentioned. So well, you can call us back, caller, if you can remember his other films, where we're just drawing a blank <laughs> yeah. on him right now. And uh, hopefully the feedback and thank you for your call. won't deafen us all. Yes, and thank you for your call. Um, but yeah, Jeff, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were talking about. We you. know the phone's working. Though. Well, yes, yes, that's yes, true. Yes, thank yes, you, yes, caller. Yes. Um, no, the Palm Beach story, which I like that it, the beginning was actually the end of the love story and shows you what happens after you know the two lovers run off and get married and see what their life is like. And I just <coughs> really enjoyed the film, but that would probably be my favorite of all of his films. But you know, there's plenty of other ones. Um, was it The Miracle of Morgan Creek, which is about a woman who gets pregnant and can't remember who she got pregnant by. All she remembers was it was a sailor, and she uh, basically blackmails her best friend into pretending he's the father, which I thought was pretty racy for 1940s, considering women were supposed to be so chaste back then. That's amazing they could get away with that with the reduction code back then. Exactly. I gotta mention one writer, because you just brought up a very, about, just about uh, you know unknown babies and stuff. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite screenwriters, I don't think he's, I gotta give him credit. He's not like perfect, but his ideas are some of the most original. He's not as good as a director, but as a writer, he's excellent. Larry Cohen. I, I knew you were gonna mention Larry Cohen. <laughs> he's a great writer. I, I sort of, you know I what? I don't know if he's a great writer, oh, but he he's does get writer. these like. I I see what you're saying, ideas. and I don't he's entirely creative. agree with you. I'll give him just very creative. His ideas are <laughs> highly original. He comes up with really creative ideas. He is directing it's just his screenplays. The execution. It's Might his direction not is not the greatest. Be, or hardly ever meets the idea. I think his best film is God Told Me To. I, th I, think, I think the Larry Cohen's tragedy is, is that his ideas were too ambitious for their budgets. Yeah. Well, know? he was a low-budget filmmaker. Yeah, and, and he was this guy that like, was making, trying to make these low-budget movies because you know, you know, he had to make money, whatever, but you could tell that he had like, something real to say. And it somehow just wasn't, you know... It, it's like Q, the Winged Serpent. That's a terrific movie with an, uh, one of the best performances I've ever seen in a movie. Michael Moriarty. I mean, I, we were talking about Michael Moriarty the other day. We're going to have another episode on, on Masters actor. of Horror, and there's very, an episode of Michael very, very Moriarty strange. in it. I can't figure out if I like him or not. I just think he's fascinating <laughs> to watch. He's just so, the movie, I mean, I love that, that famous story Sam Markoff talks about, you know, where, where Joel Siegel, I believe, is at a Cannes Film Festival, and he goes, oh, no, Rex Reed, it's Rex Reed. He goes, what a wonderful method performance by Michael Moriarty in the middle of all that dreck and Samuel Ziarkov goes, the direct was my idea. Are you familiar with that comment? Yeah, I've read story. about that somewhere. Well, Q is a terrific idea. I love the idea how it's about really more about the small time losers trying to cash in on this right. success of a monster. That's really original I'll take on. No, no, oh, I mean, even It's Alive is sort of, you know. Brilliant. And even like his uh, you know, more obvious attempts, like the stuff, you know, he's like making fun of, uh, you know, 
consumer culture. The stuff culture is actually very entertaining. They do it so fast. Like um, the problem with the stuff, and it's the execution of the direction, is that he couldn't decide if he wanted to make it a dark comedy or a slapstick comedy or a social commentary. Mm -hmm. But it's a great idea about mass And again, another really strange left field performance from Mark Michael Moriarty. It's like, what, what the hell is he? What's so funny is I listen to the commentary track because I'm a huge Larry Cohen fan. His commentaries are phenomenal. He said Michael Moriarty came to him and goes, can we make him a southerner? And let's do this and do this. He goes, okay, why not? And he said he just made up this whole character as his own and did it. And I was like, God, I miss performances like that, you know, acting like that. All right, all right, Froggy. We're Finally, go God to told to him. Go to him. No, no, no. Well, I want to talk blame. about one of my favorite <laughs> screenwriters. I want to talk about Mr. Greg Araki? Mr. Charlie Kaufman. I love okay. Charlie Kaufman. I'll give you a card. Yeah. I love that guy. Um, I find that what he did with being John Malkovich brought such originality. The only problem with Charlie Kaufman is, is he had such, I don't know if he had box office success, but he had such critical success with things like that and adaptation and, uh, and uh, uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That so many imitators came out of the woodwork and uh, human nature. He did human nature as well. Yeah, human. Yeah. That was his only. Was it human behavior or nature? I don't know. Human, human nature. nature. Yeah. yeah, that was his only uh, misstep. Uh, but that, I think that had more to do with Michel Gondry with that. But uh, well, he suffers from what I call the Tarantino syndrome after Pulp Fiction. A lot of people who love Pulp Fiction began to hate it because of all the ripoffs that followed. Yeah, there was a exactly. lot here. Exactly. There, I'll give you an example: Two Days in the Valley, Things mm. to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Destiny turns on the radio. But, but even Truth Tarantino is ripping off Tarantino after a while. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it's, and it's like I, <laughs> I still ripping off himself. It, it, it's, you know, it, it's interesting that I we agree. were bringing up. I mean, I know what you want to talk but about. But he's Kaufman. ripping himself off. But but Tarantino Can you really do that? was almost like yeah, a one. <laughs> he's repeating himself. Wonder, and he's, and it's like I'm really getting sick of the movie references and every character talking as if you know. Yeah, they, I'm they, sorry, but a bunch of hot girls don't talk like Quentin Tarantino. I'm sorry, yeah. I've never That's encountered true. that. It's like having a conversation with yourself. We're talking about death you. proof people. Death proof, which if you see it as Tarantino's, yeah, I, sadly enough, awful. We, we were doing a screenwriter show, and we got to mention that. We have to because he's the most popular yeah, screenwriter of his yeah. generation. Look at it. Everything he touched turned to gold. Even the stuff he didn't direct. True Romance, which actually I consider his best screenplay. But it's not really his screenplay. I mean, well, it's filmed. Yeah. In, it's, it's his screenplay, but they rearranged the way it's told. Well, uh, Roger yeah. Avery uh, wrote yeah, well, that, 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 was a, that was a part of the trilogy. He but you know what? In a weird kind of way, you know, having, you know, uh, uh, though he's had mixed success with, with the final result, Roger Avery, I think, is a much stronger screenwriter. Oh. I thought Rules of, of Attraction was a really interesting film. I think he's not a very good screenwriter. Really? I think his first film, Killing Zoe, is actually not a bad film. I don't think it's anything I like original. I don't think it's anything original screen-wise. But he's not attempting to do. Not he's not. At, you know, at least he's trying to be different. Did you see you Mr. Stitch? Oh, no, but I've seen wow. Rules of Attraction. Uh, you know, and, and even though I absolutely hated Silent Hill, there was something very original going on there. I don't know. If I it was liked the Silent Hill. I wanted to love it, but I liked it. I don't concur. I don't point. know. I couldn't figure out what the hell happened in the last third of the film. It just kind of lost me altogether. But. You know, at least it was something different. It, I mean, it felt it felt like an eleven-year-old made it or something. You know, or so you know, oh, it just God. didn't no, feel I like. Just felt, I just felt it was too ambitious for its own good. Yeah. We have about three minutes left here. Oh. So, um, who would you say? Okay, let's just wrap this up. We talked about some of our favorite screenwriters. Who is the absolute worst screenwriter you think who's still getting work? I'm going to name him right now for me, and I think he's a piece of shit and he should quit. Fuck you. Sorry, Akiva Goldsmith. Oh, he's horrible. Oh, horrible. Yeah, I agree. He, he is man. horrible, horrible, horrible. Sorry, I had to mention that, guys. I'm horrible, sorry. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I paid money Akiba three times. Akiba Goldsman, horrible, Awful. horrible, horrible, horrible. The absolute worst screenwriter. I think he should be writing infomercials. That's how low I think he is. I mean, he is that bad. Batman and Robin is one of the worst That's screenplays in the history of films. I'm sorry. I had no idea what the hell was happening in that movie. And I don't disagree. There, you know, it's so funny. It's about nothing, and I still wasn't able to follow it, you know? Um, who else would you say is well, he's else? sucking Ron Howard's dick, so that's probably why uh, he gets. Whoa, fun. okay, okay. That's um, why he's getting so much. We're getting angry. Go ahead. Well, he doesn't really work that much, but James V. Hart, who uh, wrote Bram Stoker's Dracula and Frankenstein, yeah, he was uh, pretty bad. Oh, you forgot he, the worst one though. Which one? Hook. See, oh, I didn't even know he wrote that. That was but, where he got famous from. Was Hook. Oh uh, well, he. Well, for me, the worst screenwriter of all worst. time is what's his name? Brothers McMullen, dude. Uh, oh, Ed, Ed Burns. Ed Burns. How can I forget? Talk yeah. about the guy who's. We love to hate on Ed Burns, but oh, man. Edward Schaefer too is another one we got to mention. Eric who Schaefer. Sucks. Eric Schaefer, yeah. Oh, there's a guy who's so in love with himself. He should marry a mirror. 
No, I'm not exactly too fond of Joe Esterhaus either. You know what's so funny? I don't. I actually have a little respect for Joe Esterhaus because I wrote read his book. He's actually not. A, he's a very entertaining writer in terms of his autobiography. Screenwriting. His movies, though. His movies are not the greatest. No. I will uh, say, though, I do enjoy... Fatal Attraction, awful. Or, I, no, no, I'm sorry. I do uh, enjoy Basic Instinct. Basic Instinct. Basic Instinct. Basic Instinct. Jade. But, you know, Ooh. at least there's a sense <laughs> with Esther House that he knows, you know, he's, he's like, yeah, I know, this is crap. You know, whereas, whereas you get the yeah. other sense, like, they keep a gold, episode, the Goldman types. Black. Well, he's, oh, we, we already had a show, show on him. him. You know, he's a great... We always have... Or Judd Apatow. I will say this, though. One thing, you got to give Joe Esther House credit, though. He demanded that he get paid a fair share, because we were talking about the Writers Guild earlier, and he actually said, these people are making millions off me, I should get more, and he did. You know, for oh. a screenwriter, supposedly he had sex with Sharon Stone in her primes, so that ain't too bad. Not bad at all. an ugly bearded guy. Well, anyway, we'll be doing another show on the 5th of December at 8 o'clock on Channel 67. The 5th. And uh, we hope to see Remember, you next time. Until we'll next time. We'll see you on the 5th. And um, hopefully my voice will be better. We'll see you on the 5th. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm not too big on him, are you? Who? Oh, yeah, Kiva Goldsman. Oh, uh, I hate his guts. God, how, and he gets nominated for an Oscar, doesn't he? He won an he Oscar. He won. How can you win an Oscar for that I was going to say, what do you guys track? think of da uh, David Goyer? He's sort of a